Well, good morning, everyone. Nice to speak with uh, such an almost full big room. I'm uh, Peter Nelstedt, CEO of uh, Sensagen, and uh, we are a sustainable growth company in a market undergoing a paradigm shift. We have high-tech solutions that help companies transition to non-animal testing. Thereby, we help companies bring safe, ethical, and more sustainable products to market. We also help companies secure a more safe production environment for their employees. And we help the world to reduce the number of animal tests. And we are on a growth track and have very strong execution in the last couple of years. This year, we have rolling 12-month sales growth of 27% plus. The first nine months of this year, we have 16% plus growth and we are quickly approaching break-even. Our gross margin, we were able to expand whilst driving revenue to 69%, that's uh, plus five points. And we also improved our EBITDA margin to negative 29%, which is a big improvement with 17 points. So as you can see, the company is moving towards break-even. We received approval for our own developed bringing from Lund University immune technology, uh, technology called Guard Skin, from OECD last year. And uh, we have made two acquisitions of uh, growing and profitable companies to complement Guard. And we have also in this year recorded the first re revenue and innovation synergies. We also received record high numbers for the Guard platform from major cosmetics, a major chemical industry and big pharma companies throughout the world. And as you can see on the right hand side, this is translating into, uh, into quick growth. We are now a group of three companies at Sensagen. We have Sensagen in Lund with expertise in skin sensitization and toxicity testing developer of a state-of-the-art guard technology, 20 employees, eight of them PhDs, based here in Medicon Village. We have a subsidiary called Vitroscreen, which is an expert uh, CRO in preclinical efficacy and toxicity testing, experts in uh, advanced human 3D tissue models, 10 employees. And we have also complemented our operation with a uh, consulting and advisory firm called ToxHub, which possess toxicology and pharmacology regulatory expertise. And the reason for this acquisition is, of course, that customers need advice which tests to run. When they have run the test, they need help with compiling uh, regulatory dossiers. And that is sort of bringing a more complete solutions for our clients. We work on a global market, the in vitro toxicology testing market. It is uh, growing in the last five years with 7%. We see signs that it will continue to grow. The total market size was estimated at $9 billion. We think it will grow a little faster uh, in the next period. It's driven by more animal testing bans in more countries, ESG engagement with uh, large companies, human relevance and cost and time. The biggest markets are Europe and North America. That's where we focus. And as you can see, we are pretty industry agnostic. We work with cosmetics, medical device, chemicals, pharmaceuticals, but also nutrition and food additives. We have a simple growth strategy. We work with high technology, best in class in vitro technology, which we are aiming to replace animal testing with. We establish those technologies as standards and thereby we bring safer products to society. And we have a split strategy with organic, organic growth where we focus on uh, developing sales channels and good and deep customer relationships and acquisition growth where we focus on finding complementary technology and uh, uh, complementary value chain offers like Toxab. But it started with the Guard technology, and I want to take you through this slide about, about Guard. It's important uh, to, to get a grasp of what we're doing. We work with a biological cell system, in this case a human dendritic cell line. Uh, this cell line has been exposed to a training data set of known skin allergens, thereby we have uh, developed a biomarker signature, which has been locked and this biomarker signature and the train was, was trained with uh, uh, skin or machine learning. And then we have arrived at the prediction model, 
which is an algorithm, and this algorithm is, of course, locked. It's put into an app, and this is our testing platform together with our proprietary cell system. We perform this test here in Lund, but we also perform it at a couple of different CROs where we have performed a license uh, deal. And the guard technology has big advantages over uh, what we call first generation in vitro testing, but also, of course, big advantages over in vivo testing. So the guard technology is based on 196 biomarkers. It gives a superior accuracy of between 90 to 95 percent. It can be used for a very broad applicable set of substances, whilst comparative to uh, traditional in vivo testing, the relevance to human data is about 70 to 75 percent, not very ethical and also very time consuming. So there are big drivers to move towards more advanced technology and uh, uh, GARD is the most and only genomics based tool that is available on the market. This is getting success with clients. We work with large multinational clients. SET in Gothenburg is one example of a client. Uh, they are very happy with Guard working for, for their uh, absorbent hygiene products. And we also have another medical device client called Sonova. It's a Swiss hearing aid company, one of the largest in the world. They also use our test to check for new materials when they are implementing that in production. And as you can see on the right hand side, or well, what is it, left hand side for you, we have uh, a number of collaborations with very large clients like ExxonMobil, Corteva, Lundbeck in Denmark, and IFF in the nutrition space. And um, just giving you a view of our business model, as this is not a market you might know so much about, we know that it's a pretty long uh, sales pipe. We start with con contact and discussions. It usually takes between six to 18 months until we arrive at the first order. First order is in uh, around 300,000 or slightly shy of that Swedish krono. And then we know that the repeat purchase rate year two is between 30 to 50 percent. And then the uh, purchase sum on average is about 510,000 krono. And our model is basically to very simple. We want to add more customers on this platform. And we have been able to do so in this first nine months. We added 25 new customers in 2023 versus 18 for the full year 2022. This is, of course, resulting in sales growth, 23% with Guard this year. But we also have 77% of our revenue from recurring clients. So as long as we can keep on doing this, the company will grow. And we did get new clients and some new key orders in this first nine months. First of all, we have a repeat order from the Research Institute for Fragrance Materials in the US, RIFIM. It's worth 1.6 million. It's a development of guard where we can also check for photosensitization. This means that a substance can change its, it can become allergenic or dangerous if it's exposed to UV or sunlight. And the, our guard platform can now what we're looking at is if we can see a difference between photoallergens and photoirritants. It's a big deal in cosmetics and a big deal for, for these chemical companies that develop products for that space. So not only is this a valuable order for us because we just received it, it's good for our sales this year, but it is also a shopping window to the 40 or so members of the RIFIM organization, which is the major chemical companies in US and Europe. We also had a large follow-on order from the world leader in cosmetics. It's an adaptation project where we make a specific version of Guard to fit their, their needs. And then we released this morning, we got a new order from a, a, a world leading client. We cannot name, their, name them, unfortunately, but they are in the fast moving consumer goods sector. The order is worth 800,000, but it's very strategically important because as I showed you on the previous slide, we have a high repetition rate and these large multinationals is the, the type of client we want in our portfolio. And we have a, a, in our daughter company in Italy, an increased demand for efficacy testing in pharma and cosmetics. So the first half was good. We had 18% growth and an EBITDA loss which was reduced. I also want to point out that we had a cash position at the middle of the year of 25 million. And with this increasing sales and 
having our costs under control, our burn rate is significantly reduced, and we think we have enough cash to take the company into break even. So, what's the next steps for Sensagen? Well, we want to continue our growth story, drive, driven by the Guard platform. We also have a platform at uh, Vitro Screen called Aura. It's, for in, it's a 3D model platform for, uh, for more advanced model testing, efficacy testing in pharma, and advisory services. We want to keep our costs under control, expand the test and service portfolio, and then execute on our R&D program to get more approvals and increase the market for Guard. And there are more opportunities for us, and the development is going our way. We have the FDA Modernization Act in the US, with, where they removed the mandatory uh, animal testing before proceeding into clinical trials. And we have the medical device regulation here in Europe, and the ECA, which in the law text now says to uh, the industry that if there is a non-animal alternative available, you should use that. And we have the best high-tech solutions for it. So, thank you very much and welcome to Sensagen's growth journey. Thank you, Peter. And we have quite a few questions here oh. and people want to talk about money and profitability, <laughs> <laughs> unsurprisingly. So, Peter, what needs to happen for Sensagen to reach profitability? Well, we just need to continue exactly what we've been doing for the last, last uh, two years. Get more customers, keep our costs under control, and keep on maintaining gross margin. And I think it's possible. We, we are adding, uh, uh, like I said, 25 clients this year. Another one will release, I guess, 26. So when you have reached profitability, what kind of margins are you aiming for? <laughs> I think... Um, Sensagen can, uh, we now reached a gross margin of uh, almost 70%. I think that's a good goal to try to maintain over long term with our proprietary technology. But uh, when it comes to profitability, I think, uh, you know, EBITDA margin of 20 to 25% is feasible. And if we look at what could potentially um, hinder you from getting there, there's a question here about what you see as the main hurdles or the main challenges for, for Sensogen to grow your market size and to break even. Um, I think as many companies here, we work with brand new technology. And uh, life science is uh, cutting edge, but it's also conservative. And I think toxicologists in general are, are pretty conservative profession, which I think we all should be very grateful for. So it takes some time to build up the scientific evidence about the platform to get more and more people to adopt new technology. And that time frame is a little, uh, is maybe the biggest hurdle for us. But I think uh, beyond that, we have the approval in place, we have uh, the organization in place, so uh, we, we should just keep on executing. How do you work to uh, convince the toxicology profession to, to use Sensogen's product? Well, we think the best salespeople are our customers. So what we do is that we try to create collaborations with the world leading companies like uh, Rifim or with Exxon uh, Mobile. And we, uh, we arrange joint presentations, joint scientific abstracts for the main conferences where we have them to present the findings about Guard and not us. That I think is the, the number one. And then of course we work with very tight relationships with the large companies. We also have a question about Toxub here. They joined your group in December, I think it was. Uh, how would you evaluate the first couple of months? Well, um, we started off really great. Toxhub had great sales uh, in the first part of this year. We were very pleased, and it's also a very profitable operation. I think we, the EBITDA margin is close to 40%. So uh, it was a great addition to our group. In the last six months, it's been a little challenging because the MDR, which I also think a lot of companies here are grateful for, was extended until 2027. That, took, that meant that their customers took it a little more, bit more easy with uh, some of the advisory. But we are building more business now and uh, we see that we can combine the guard sales approach with also selling Toxhub services where we have the first few orders in already. So you're expecting that to, yes. to become less challenging? Yes. <laughs> Well, thank you so much, Peter. Thank you very much. Thank you.